morning. Welcome to the Professor Knits podcast. I woke up this morning and uh, it is kind of a cloudy, overcast day. And I decided I was in the mood to dye some fiber. And so I thought I would bring you along for the ride. What I'm dyeing today is a mixture of 30% silk and 70% BFL. So the first thing I need to do is let my fiber soak in uh, a citric acid bath. And you can use vinegar. I happen to have citric acid. So what I'll do is I'll start out with two cups of uh, just tap water. I don't want it warm yet. Um, with one tablespoon of citric acid uh, that has been dissolved in. And I just use this um, Millard brand that I get on Amazon. And what I'll do is I want to saturate the fiber and let it sit, but it doesn't have to be swimming, okay? And there are eight ounces in here, eight ounces of fiber that's just sort of messed around a little bit. And I should note, these are two four ounce um, rollings. So the reason why I do that is uh, I'm gonna be making two separate four ounce tops that are the same colorway. And then I have that extra bit after I spin it, if I wanna make a bigger shawl or garment or something like that, I've got the enough of the same. All right, I've ended up here with about eight cups of water all together and about two tablespoons of the citric acid. So it's a pretty acidic bath. Um, and I let it soak for about 30 minutes and made sure all the fibers were completely saturated, uh, but again, not necessarily swimming in the water. Now, I've already mixed up my dye and what I have here is one teaspoon of the Champagne Colorway by Dharma in one cup of water. And that's gonna be my first color. My other color is a teaspoon of the Deep Magenta also by Dharma in one cup of water. And I can tell already this is gonna be, I think a little bit too strong, but uh, we'll see. Now over here, I have very, very gently started the stove. And I have, as you can see, a flat range glass top stove that needs to be cleaned. And I just put my pan on top. Now I have to be very careful with heat control because you can see the elements are different sizes. And because this is not an industrial pro professional dye studio and just my my kitchen, I have to be pretty careful and watch the heat. So what I'm going to do is adjust each element to make sure that none of them are burning too much. And here I go with the first solution. This is the champagne. And I'm just sort of sprinkling it everywhere. I'm not going to use a whole lot of this color. I mean, I'll use the whole cup, but I'm just going to sort of make sure that it's evenly distributed. Um, and it's just gently starting to heat now. And then I just kind of very gently move the fiber around and because it's starting to heat up, I have to be very careful with how much agitation I'm giving. And I should also mention that I created my dye solutions with extra soak water. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna let that gently heat up so it can strike before I uh, add the next color. So I wanna make sure this one has already strikes. Otherwise I'll get something, I could end up with something a little bit muddier than I intended. Uh, so yes, very gently moving things around, get that water and the dye moving around. And always very delicately. Look at that, it looks like candy corn, doesn't it? Yeah, new colorway, candy corn good for the fall. But I'm not going to keep it like this. I am going to very soon add my other color. Yeah, still a little bit of yellow there as you can see. Now it doesn't have to be completely, completely uh, 
clear at this point. Um, but what I am going to do is I'm going to preheat my oven to 200. Now the reason I do this um, is because the pan that I'm using, if anybody's wondering, it's just a proving pan that I picked up at a restaurant supply store. And it's not a very heavy duty one. And I don't trust high heat. I don't trust it on any high heat elements. Um, if I had a heavier duty stainless steel one, I'd definitely just do the whole process on the countertop. Um, but I just don't want to accidentally burn the fiber uh, through the bottom of the pan. So I will be putting this in the oven and cooking it in the oven uh, just to keep the fiber a little safer. All right, how are we doing on this side? Oh, I'm starting to crave candy corn now. So you can still see plenty of white and then dark orange spots and it's just gently starting to bubble now the water and there's not a lot of water in here so I'm going to turn it down. Now it's still lots of white but then there's also the darker oranges sort of a dirty yellowish looking color. It's exactly what I'm hoping. I'm aiming for a very light summery color ultimately. Um, I'll show you at the end some other skeins or pardon me fiber I've dyed that's ended up really dark and, and beautiful um, and but I want this one to stay light and bright so I'm going to leave a lot of white spots as you can see when I'm pushing things around all the fibers are not going to get dyed in this process there's going to be a lot of white patches and I'm of course doing that on purpose all right so let's go with the next color I decided that it was too strong, so I added another cup of water. So now this is two cups to one teaspoon, and I can still tell um, that this is going to be too strong. So I'm going to be very, very careful with my placement. Um, and I'm not going to use a whole lot of this dye. Now it's a very vibrant pink, fuchsia pink that's coming through. Um, so I have to be extremely precious with it because I don't want it to wash out and over dye the yellow. I want to make sure I maintain a lot of the yellow and also maintain a lot of red, uh, um, pardon me, white areas. So this one is going to be high maintenance as I stand by and make sure um, I'm very, very careful with where I place the dye. But I also have to make sure I place enough so that I get a nice evenly distributed color. Ooh, I'm gonna like this, I think. There we go, very gentle, but make sure I keep those yellow areas up out of the liquid so they don't get completely um, over dyed. And the water is just hot enough now that it's striking pretty quickly, but I still need to to move the water around a little bit and I can tip the pan a little bit if I like. There I go, I'm going to tip it just a bit uh, to get it over to the other side. Control, control, control. That's what I'm doing with this one. I'm not always this, oh look at that, that's perfect. I'm not always this careful with the dye placement. Uh, sometimes I just sort of add the dye and see what happens and there's a lot of happy accidents this way. But I really want to make sure this stays, that a lot of yellow and white stays. So I am being a little bit more of a control freak today. Look at how beautiful that looks. So I use just a fraction of the magenta dye, and I don't think I'm going to add any more. Um, sometimes less is more. All right, so this has been baking in the oven for 200, at 200 degrees for about 30 minutes. Um, I, as you can see, I covered it with tin foil. Sorry, I jumped ahead here. And now let's see. Yeah, it's perfect. I love it. And I know that underneath those layers, there's going to be a lot of white fiber. But look at the dye bath is pretty much completely, completely exhausted. Now I'm going to let this sit for a couple of hours till it's completely, completely cold to the touch. It won't take a couple of hours, but I have things I need to get done with the kids. So, um, sorry, my daughter's turning on the TV in the can background. You, can, you, can you do it somewhere else? 
I'm almost done, sweetheart. So this will sit and uh, yeah, it won't take a couple of hours, but I, I'm going to have to leave it for a couple of hours. All right, so now, I'm doing this, please. Um, it's completely cool to the touch now, and uh, as you can see, I'm very, very pleased with the color. Um, and what I'm going to do now is rinse it. And I'm going to do this so, so gently because I don't want to felt the fiber, although that's unlikely at this point. So what I'm going to use is a strainer. And this is a tip that I um, picked up from Sarah Iyer. She's a pretty well-known dyer. And uh, she mentioned this in one of her videos. So you very gently put it into uh, the, the strainer and very gently squeeze it. Then I put it into a Tupperware container full of soapy water. And I just very gently move things around. In the past, when I've done this with fiber and not used a, uh, a colander or any sort of a strainer, I have found that it's gotten a little bit, that the fiber got a little bit unruly and away from me. And just to make sure it's all completely washed, I will keep pouring water over top. And then of course, Make sure I lift it and turn it and very, very gently press it. And I can see from the water that the color struck really well. There doesn't seem to be any residual dye coming out. So that's nice because if you have to hit the right acid to fiber to water to heat ratio, otherwise you can have some color bleed. Even if you um, get it right, you can still have some color bleed, but there looks like uh, there's none. And that's that's good because I left so much of the fiber white. All right, let me get this out of my way. And now I am going to, because it's not a heavily saturated dye, that's about all I need to do for washing in the soap. And now what I'm going to do with just another general, regular household bin is put it put the the fiber into clear water so let's get as much of that soapy water out of it without compressing the fibers we have to be very gentle just a gentle gentle squeeze and then I'm going to just reach over here and rinse my strainer so there's not too much soap on it as I drip all over my floor Okay, so um, I got most of the soap off of it, and now I'll put that in the clean, cool water, and same thing, very gently rinse this by pressing it very gently. See, hardly any dye came out, so that's perfect. Um, and now I'm just going to pour water, get this out of my way, pour water over the fiber. And what I like about doing this process as well is that as the water hits the fiber, it kind of puffs it up again. So if it was compressed at all, this is a nice way of getting some of the bounce back. You know, I guess it's just physics, right? When you, um, when you press some uh, liquid or air into a, a light fiber, it kind of puffs out. So that helps it as well. So it'll help to dry faster too. All right, heat this up and then I'll uh, very, very gently turn it over. In a minute. Excuse the dog barking. So I got a lot of, you can see that the, uh, the rinse water is just a little bit soapy. But again, uh, when I put the soap in the first bin, it was just like 
a couple of drops. You don't need much. And I just use um, dish soap. Dawn, palm olive, whatever I happen to have. And I just use the teeniest, tiniest bits. All right, so I'm satisfied that, you know, because there wasn't a whole lot of dye in this project, that it's sufficiently rinsed. And I'll let it sit and drip for a while, like maybe 10 or 15 minutes on a towel or uh, back into an empty bin, just so that it's not sopping, sopping, sopping wet. Because again, the key to this is not to um, squeeze and compress the fibers, especially when they're wet. All right, so now I have draped everything over a dry rack. And as you can see, I'm gently pulling the fibers apart. And there's lots and lots of white in there. And pulling the fibers apart will help it to dry. And there you can see it's been drying now for two days and there's still lots of little yellow spots, lots of white, lots of beautiful pink. And I let it dry for two days and um, you need to make sure these fibers are completely, completely dry. Yeah, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. And if I wasn't, you'd just over dye it. That's the beauty of this. As long as you're careful at first and you don't go too far too soon, you can always change it up. And here we are, the final braids. I love them. I can't wait to get spinning. Beautiful pink, subtle yellow, and lots and lots of vibrant color. Join me again and uh, for the next video when I start to spin this lovely yarn.